Hello, I'm James Caldwell. Welcome to the channel. This video is the first in a series of three or possibly four videos where I will cover Un Dia de Noviembre by Leo Brower. I say three or four videos because the music is divided into three sections and I will have a video over each section and possibly a fourth video that will cover some performance ideas and some embellishments that we can put in the piece. I'm playing from the Chester Music Edition, which is available on Amazon and other sources. It's, it's the published version of the piece that you can purchase. There may be others out there, I'm not sure. You can find other versions of this online for free. One popular one that I have here is by Jesus Ortega, and it's actually very good. And that would be okay to refer to. I have another one here, which I believe a student gave me many years ago. It has standard notation and tablature. It doesn't say who put it together, but it does say words and music by Leo Brower, which is kind of amusing because there are no words. They actually didn't spell Brower correctly. Each of these versions does contain errors. This last one that I mentioned with the tab, it is by far the worst, and it starts off with mistakes right from the beginning. So I would avoid this version at all costs. I will point out the printed mistakes as we go through the piece. There are no errors in the first section if you're referring to the Chester Music Edition or the Jesus Ortega Edition. Okay, so let's get into this piece. It is in the key of A minor, and it's uh, mostly in three-quarter time. I say that because you'll see as we go through there are a couple of measures where they change the time signature and those are just transitional measures to go from one section to the next. The first section is by far the easiest to play and the second and third sections get progressively more difficult. It begins with two lead-in notes. So it's an A and a B and that's very simple. And then the first full measure gets into this A minor chord. So the lead-in notes A, B. Then we have a C with A in the bass, an E on the fourth string, A and C on the third and second string. The thumb will come back and hit that E on the fourth string. A finger will hit the first string E, thumb will hit the fourth string E. So here we go. Lead in, first measure. And it has that kind of feel through this section of the piece. The thumb is hitting every other note. In the next measure, we're holding down this A minor chord, we will put our little finger over on the G on the sixth string. It's okay if this finger is flat, it doesn't have to be on its tip. We don't need the fifth string, you can mute that all you want to. We just have to make sure we get the G out and that the fourth string E is good. So, second full measure. Then it's just A, B. Third measure, we get an F in the bass with C. So this one, uh, we've got two fingers in the first fret. First finger is on the sixth string, second finger is on the second string, C. You have to rotate your hand around like this to get these two notes out, okay? That's F and C. It's got an open D there. Then we have the A and the C, so the third finger comes down on the A like that in the open E string. The last two notes are D, E. Notice that there's a rest under there. That means you can let go of these notes that we were holding down. I try to let things ring as long as possible and we do want to keep the F down uh, on the sixth string. But you can do that. You can let go of the, the A there. Okay, the next measure, it's a C chord with G in the bass. It has a squiggly line there, that means we can stagger the notes as opposed to striking them all at once, let the fingers roll off the chord. While we hold down this chord, we've got a G, E, G, and then we have the middle part of the chord and the D note. So this measure, Hardly have to move this hand at all. Once you grab this chord, don't have to move anything until we put the little finger down for the D. The next measure is just a C chord with C in the bass, so bring this finger over. We're 
rocking back and forth between the G and the E. Also, I want to point out the chord here. We have C, G, C, E. The G is written a little bit off to the side there, but it is part of the chord. Don't think that you're playing these notes and coming right back on the G. It's, it's part of the first beat. So all of those notes, C, G, C, E, are all together. Again, it's a, a rolled chord. It's got the squiggly line, so you can roll the fingers off as you go through it. Then we play the G, E, G. We have a B in the bass and a, a G on the first string. And back to the third string G. This would be the fifth full measure. Here we go. Next measure, it's back on an A minor chord. It's A minor for the first four eighth notes. Then we get this G in the bass with the open E, third string G. Now we get an F in the bass on the sixth string and A on the third string. And we're ro rocking back and forth between the D and the A there. Low E with a B string and a G string. So let me play that measure. And the eighth measure. That's uh, more or less an A minor chord. We don't have the C in it, but we're just going down the notes. A, E, A on the fifth string, back to E, A, and B, which the last two notes were the same as our lead-in notes. So we repeat back to measure one, up to the top. So that is the first section. Those eight measures, relatively simple. It's all down here in the first position, mostly centered around A minor with a descending bass line. And then a little bit of a C chord and so forth. I just want to point out here that everything is straight eighth notes in the rhythm. You could play it very mechanically with a metronome, tick, 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 uh, something like this. And so forth. And nothing really wrong with that, but we want to play it with more feeling and give some of the chords a little more air, a little more space. You can speed up a little bit in some sections and slow down in others to make it more or less the same time, but with a rubato tempo, which really means no specific tempo. So I always try to play it with a little more feeling, a little more expression, just get into the piece. For the next video. This really is a beautiful piece of music. The opening section is just lovely. So take your time with it. Make sure you get the fingerings down and the finger exchange is very smooth. Let the notes flow into each other and avoid as much as possible buzzes, dead notes, and just overall choppy playing. We want to bring it to life, so to speak. I hope that you enjoyed this look at the first section of Un Dia de Novembre by Leo Brower. And I hope that you'll stay with me. Stay tuned for the upcoming 
sections and the completion of this piece. I hope that you will work through the sections with me. hope that you will practice these measures and play them beautifully. It's uh, definitely a piece worth playing. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. I've been James Caldwell. Thank you.